Woo! Hey, y'all. Oh, it's a scorcher out there today. I was just clearing some brush. Howdy, it's me, Mac Weldon. I am a entrepreneur, I guess you might call me. I make socks, underwear, t-shirts for men so they can feel comfortable and feel confident as they go about their day, no matter what they're doing. Now, look. I'm a man who believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. These are my core beliefs. I have abandoned the church because these are the tenets of belief to which I hold. All of my products are naturally antimicrobial. Now, when I was a devout man, scripture proscribed hate. It said, do not hate. You must not hate. And also that you see that in popular films like Star Wars. Hate, it's not good. But I'll, I will confess a human failing to you. This is my sin. I hate microbes. I hate them. That's why I've made all my products antimicrobial. You know what microbes do? They cause odors. What's an odor? It's a fancy college word for stink. I don't want you to stink. I don't want to stink. I don't want anyone to stink. Not just because I'm concerned for you and your social standing. Like, I want you to find love. Why should it be hard? You know, somebody, you're going to ask somebody to get over the fact that you stink? No. It's not just because of that. It's not just because I want to make life easier for you. I want to make life easier for me. I don't want to be around people that stink. Sorry. Nothing in the Bible about that. You're not supposed to judge people, but... I think like you're allowed to be upset if somebody stinks. And listen to this. You don't like that? You don't like that first pair? I want you to be comfortable. Dang it. I just want you to be comfortable. If you don't like that first pair, well, sir, you can keep it. You keep it, and I'll refund you. I ain't going to ask you any questions. Because you've said all you need to say. What, what am I going to get in some dialogue about? We're going to go to couples counseling, find out why you didn't like the best underwear on earth? No, son. That's on you, and I'm going to be the bigger man. I'm going to refund your money. You're going to keep them draws, and I know you're secretly going to wear them because you're just trying to scam the system. Not only do my underwears, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well, too. You can do it. You can wear the stuff for any occasion, right? Good for working out, going to work, going out on dates, everyday life. Let's say you, you shy in the pool area. You can wear my... You wear one of my t-shirts, wear some of my boxer briefs under your bathing suit, wear some socks in there. Maybe you don't like the way your feet look. And, and let's be honest, most feet, not pleasant. I, I ain't no Quentin Tarantino, but I think a lady's foot is nice. I think a gentleman's foot is disgusting, and it should be hidden inside a comfortable sock. So go to MacWeldon.com, get 20% off using promo code PFT. That stands for Paul F. Tompkins, who is the host of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins, which y'all are about to listen to. MacWeldon.com. You get 20% off using promo code PFT. Down with microbes! Welcome! Welcome! Welcome, everybody! Welcome on over here! I like you. Do you like me? I can't. I can't know. I can't know because I can't hear you, but I also can't know because did you, hey, did you realize you'll never truly know if people like you or not? Think about the people in your life, your friends, quote, in quotes. I'm not saying all your friends are not your friends. I'm just saying they might not be. This is, here's the thing, guys. In any relationship, you have to have trust at some point. You have to, uh, not trust. F fuck that, fuck that. I shouldn't have said that. Ugh, God damn it. Wish we were, could edit this, but it's impossible. You don't need trust. I mean, if hey, if you can get that, great. What you need is faith. You got to have it. Like George Michael sang to us. You got to have faith. You got to, at some point, you got to say, you know what? I choose to believe this person loves me. Oh, that sounded bleak. 
It also sounded insane. Because <laughs> that person may have made no bones about the fact they do not love you. But then that's the power of delusion, isn't it? I choose to believe this person loves me. Let's not underrate that power. That can't be right. Underestimate. Give short shrift to. How do you like that? I've had some college. <laughs> Delusions can be powerful things. Po more powerful than illusions. As powerful as allusions. When somebody's making an allusion to something else. Let's just say reference, guys. It wouldn't it make things so much easier if we cut out that one word, allusion? Because if you say, oh, he's making an allusion to it, like, uh, like a magic trick? No. Why would I say he's making a magic trick to the grapes of wrath? Yeah, I have some, <laughs> I have some very high-minded discussions about literature with people. People who are miserable pedants who are just going after my every word trying to trip me up, but they never will. You know who you are. Why do so many of my enemies listen to this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <laughs> welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I'm the second part. This is a show where I invite a special someone onto the show. I just, you know what? I, don't know. I always say special guest. This time I said special someone. That makes it seem like <laughs> this is someone I have a crush on. Like I'm a secret admirer. A special someone. <laughs> I've had a special guest, a person of note, onto the show. We have a chat inspired by a blind question provided by our previous week's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show. And we do some improv, a narrative improv, one continuous story. And guess what? At the end of it, you're going to be smiling. Not until the very end, though. If you manage to smile before the end of the show, please write to me and tell me. I, there's no way you will. Write to Spontaneous Nation on Twitter. Look up how to spell it. It's too long for me to spell it for you now. Guys, you gotta meet me halfway. You gotta. Anyway, <laughs> let me introduce that special someone from before. This young person is making a face that I cannot read. I don't know what that emotion is. <laughs> she is a fantastic stand up comedian, and I am a big fan. And I'm excited to have her on the show. Please say hello. Well, don't. You know what? Yeah, do say it. Every once in a while, I ask this, that the listeners say out loud hello to the guest. Just take a moment and say hello to Beth Stelling. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> you gave them a chance. I gave them a chance Thank to say you. hello, and then I responded with the hello. Thank you, Beth. A lot of guests don't do that. I had no, I, I was, I just wanted to give them a chance to get to know me for one moment before I chimed in with just my... Sarah McLaughlin like voice. And you <laughs> Oh, I'm picturing so many damp dogs right now. Oh, be careful. They're gonna fall asleep before we get to the <laughs> the dogs? Yeah, my soothing voice. Oh. I love From the Sarah McLaughlin. You're comedy. talking about the listening audience. Yeah, yeah. I immediately thought the dogs were going to fall asleep no, no, at, no. by the end of the commercial. No, no, no. Beth, I have a question for you. I refuse. What? No, I'm here. I'm <laughs> this here. is unprecedented. You're my hero. I got <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Now, am I your hero because I was a first responder on 9-11? Yes. Thank you. That is the reason. Why, is, why doesn't anyone talk about that? Nobody does. Do you know my lungs are filled with pollution? I know. And i that's the reason I moved to L.A. <laughs> what a fun riff that was that everyone will have no problem with. Beth, <laughs> here's my question. What laws do you regularly break? I regularly b break the texting and driving law. It's tough not to. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Th but the thing is, when you see somebody else do it, it looks absurd, right? Right. You're like, what are you trying to do? Kill everybody? Yeah. Uh, you know, every 
I hate to go blue so early, but, you know, I feel like texting and driving is like blowjobs. Or he's like, well, I can do it, but I'm good at it. <laughs> you know, and then <laughs> either way, uh, somebody's going to die. And also like blowjobs, <laughs> no one should be doing it. Nobody. <laughs> I agree completely. I'm shocked that you said that. But <laughs> most, Me of all people. You of all people. Now, you know, I love talking about blowjobs, mm-hmm. but I don't think they're right. No. No, not for anyone in this country. <laughs> They're really. all, not for anyone in this country. Mm-mm. You know where to go if you want to do that sort of thing. That's the other law I break. Do you try to ch- <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you try to challenge yourself to not touch your phone when you're in the car? I have done it before, mm-hmm. uh, but usually, you know, it's one of those things where you like you you convince yourself it's of the utmost importance to do this. Yes. You know, I just need to see if I got one more like on Instagram. It's going to make me be able to go on with my day. Now, will you do this while the car is in motion or will you do this at a stoplight? Um, I was, for example, doing it on my way here. Sure. I was coming from Los Angeles Airport. And also, I've convinced myself of a lot of things that it would be okay to put on mascara while I drive because my eyes are open. (laughs) (laughs) And you you can see them. There's a mirror so close. Oh, yeah. And I... yeah, I think uh, we, could, we could all agree I'm here in one piece, and I don't think I left any casualties behind, but news <laughs> to know. And your eyes are really I popping like, right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this happy. while the car is in motion? It was. Did you do a mascara? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Earmuffs, Mom. <laughs> is there any chance your mother will listen to this? Yeah. Well, if I tell her to, she will. Really? She doesn't like... Google your name to see what your She's latest not appearances that type. are. She's a little bit of a technological nut. Right. Yeah. Beth has a very funny bit about her mother and her cell phone company. Yes. She one is. of my favorites of all time. Thank you. And your mother seems like a sweet lady. She is so sweet. <laughs> yes. When she found out uh, I basically I just had a little article on uh, Facebook that was posted that I was in Playboy. Uh, and it was because they just listened to me as a comedian, that sh- a touring comedian. You should go see this summer. And my mom wrote in the comment section, "Oh dear," <laughs> because she's a virgin. Right. And she wrote, "She's a virgin." Oh dear, Playboy purchasing this will be a first for me. <gasps> oh, <laughs> like so she's she was so upset. supportive. No, right. I guess I'll buy that pornography. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's in it. I'll buy it. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, it's an on, just an online thing. They're not going to put funny women in a magazine you jerk off to. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> that was a boner going down. Did you? No, I got it. Okay. I think everyone got yeah, that it. That was for the listeners at home. They didn't get to see my fingers. She go did down. the finger. Yeah. They missed out. Uh, oh. <laughs> Unprecedented. <laughs> Who's here? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes the people that aren't here yet, they we, we get on a topic that's right in their wheelhouse, yeah. and they feel compelled. They feel compelled to speak. <laughs> Beth, did you ever get in trouble with your mom, who is a very sweet lady? But oh, did you ever a, a lot? I was the youngest of three girls. She raised on her own, and she had a couple jobs, and I and I made it difficult. Did you act out? I acted out, absolutely, even though my parents' divorce was not my fault. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I love how they always tell you that this is not your fault. Yeah, I never felt it was until you told me that it wasn't. Also, the secret is, of course, it is. Yeah. (laughs) It's always about the kids. Oh, your lives are so much easier without children. Yeah. Everyone knows this. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> by us telling you it wasn't, it absolutely wasn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everything was fun until you came along. <laughs> yeah, my mo- I, I guess I had a what would be called an un- undiagnosed form of ADHD, I suppose. My really? mom got me into, I mean, I'm not saying I don't believe in that, but I also believe that, you know, it, I was born in 85, and by that time, 92-ish, when I was probably, it was at, <laughs> at its height. <laughs> <laughs> it was at a tight. My mom right. just enrolled me in, you know, gymnastics class. And then I would just, you know, work it out. Did that actually help the gymnastics well, class? Well, by the time I got – so I was on the team. So we we practiced like three times a week mm-hmm. and then have meets on the weekend. So I, you don't really have a ton of homework, I think, in those ages, you know, one to sixth grade or really. But – but I would, by the time I got home from practice at 6 p.m., just fall asleep doing my homework, whatever that was. Yeah, I mean, they, they ran it out of me. But right. Yeah. Like, I, you're at the dog park. I, then I, yeah, they ran it out of me, but I don't, 
<laughs> but I don't think I actually got the work done then that I was supposed to. I, I developed my own coping mechanisms. <laughs> sure. In the class. What's an instance where you got in trouble, where you, like, you got caught doing something that you weren't supposed to do? Well, as kids, so uh, early on, like most comedians, something weird happened to me. And uh, <laughs> we had to do some court-ordered therapy. And I remember going with my sisters, and they're talking to Pam, our therapist. And I was probably— Great therapist yeah, name. She's a wonderful woman. For a child therapist? Yeah. That is a perfect. Dr. Pam. Pa Dr. Pam. And my sisters are, like, sharing probably some things like, well, how do you feel about what happened? You know? And they're on the couch. <laughs> I've crawled under her desk. And I found it very funny to do the honking, like I'm honking her boobs <laughs> underneath the desk. And then my sisters are kind of trying not to laugh. But then she has pulled away and is just staring at me while I'm still looking at my sisters, like, <laughs> doing the honking. Wait, wait, wait. So are your little hands yeah. coming up from the desk? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I'm. it was one of those desks that had a pee hole, you know, like this. And then a I climbed pee hole? under. It. How did I think I wouldn't? <laughs> Because you mean where the chair goes? The she would notice where the, chair the goes? kid is missing from the conversation. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah, yeah, crawled yeah. underneath. I mean, my pranks weren't all worked out yet. You didn't know that this was not Dr. Pam's first rodeo. Right. And that this, <laughs> right. Is, this is exactly the kind of thing she's used to. And I didn't really get in trouble. I mean, I was always looking to get in trouble like that. I didn't, like, get, didn't get in major trouble, but it was right. like, a, come on, let's take this seriously type thing. Did you do, I mean, if you're, did you do, like sneak out after curfew and things like oh, that? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. In eighth grade. Climb we, out any windows? Uh... I'm trying to think. I'm sure. Yeah, be, being a gymnast that really made me able to. Of course. Yeah, I really. Of course. I could climb things. I was ripped. I had like a six pack. I could. I would climb anything. I could really climb anything. Right. But come eighth grade, we lived near the University of Dayton in mm -hmm. Ohio, and we. I snuck out for sure, mm -hmm. and we went and drank with a fraternity. But at the time, I believe I was wearing a water bra because I was a late bloomer. Right. And uh, I, I stole it from my mom. What, a water bra is a bra that has like Makes sort of- Makes it look like you have boobs, but it's yeah. just water. Right. Yeah. It's equivalent to putting water balloons in your bra, but Victoria's Secret did it for you and it right. was probably a lot more money. But my it was my mom's. I took it from her drawer. But like, it, I was a late bloomer probably because I was a gymnast. Sure. And I didn't grow my boobs until college and I was with a lot of ice cream. I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> a lot of ice cream. And, uh, but yeah. I, it makes you inadvertently celibate because you don't, once it gets g game time, nobody mm -hmm. can really touch them because then you, you'll be discovered that they are not actually boobs. <laughs> you know I mean, right. if somebody puts their full weight on it, it was like, you know what I mean? Oh. Like a sound that's not. <laughs> like a waterbed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, we snuck out and my it, we went to a fraternity. This was in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And obviously we weren't of age, but sometimes. The, those, eighth grade. I know. Those men overlook that they don't <sighs> i don't think they tend to see they were blinded by the water bra honestly and but i i wasn't adventurous in that way thankfully i wasn't like acting out against not having a dad and hooking up with a 18 year old boys right i was like not doing that yeah. i think i had a beer and mostly i was kind of more along for the ride i was a i can't deny that i was a part of the sneaking out right but i wasn't like the ringleader of let's hook up with 18 year old boys yeah. and drink beers. So I'm not drunk, but I've had probably a Milwaukee's best. And then of course the police get called mm -hmm. because we're found out that we're gone. And then my mom gets a call about two in the, the morning. Oh, the police didn't get called on the party. The police got called because we your mom missing. discovered you were not there. I was sleeping over at Mary's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mary lived down by UD. But now did you work this out with Mary? Yeah. Well, actually we got kind of ratted out. Because we separated. Was Mary with you? Was yeah. it like you it did the old, I'm girls. sleeping was, over here? I think it was me, Amy, Mary, and Sarah. And we went down, started drinking. Oh, and Jenny. And she of course was, Jenny. Yeah. I was going to say, was Jenny there? Yeah, she was. She was absolutely there. She never misses a party. No. And we kind of <laughs> snuck away. Two of them kind of snuck off. Because I don't know why. I forget exactly what happened. But they left, and we were still there. Oh, I think the police, like, came. Now, I don't know if it's because Mary and Sarah or something were walking around, got caught, and they said, who else are you with? Well, our friend threw over at oh, Fiji. like they were walking around drunk. I think that's Obviously what drunk. Our friend Children. threw over at Fiji. We don't want to get in trouble. But then we all got rounded Did you say up. say Fiji? Yeah, that's That a, was the name of the I frat? I think it was the frat. Fiji. Fiji. Right? What? Yeah, I think that's a thing. Is that in the Greek alphabet? Yeah. Phi Gamma. Oh, so it's a little nickname. Yeah, yeah. It's a nickname. I see. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know. Either way, okay. I'm sure they've been kicked off cans- campus and never allowed back. Probably. <laughs> those, men's, those men's lives are Pro- ruined. Those punishments are very severe yeah, for very those fraternities. Severe, exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> they had to take a class. It's a wonder they still have fraternities I anymore. Know. So <laughs> many of them have been shut down. I know, for their, their actions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I guess it's only like a rest, really, but it wasn't really <laughs> an arrest. <laughs> I was just put in a cop car and taken back. And they were were like, you scared? It was like phone book, boom, boom, right on the table. And they're like, call your parents. This is pre cell phone. I don't know, at least I didn't have one. I worked a job. It's weird that the cops would think you wouldn't know your own home phone yeah, number. Cheated. Oh, I almost gave it. <laughs> you learned that early on. Does your mom still have the same phone number? Absolutely. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. My Our phone number went from, uh, we had the same number all growing up, and then um, eventually when my mom died, my dad moved out of the house, moved in with my sister, and he took the our old phone number as his cell phone number. Oh, no way. And then when he died, my sister changed her number to our old home number. So it's still you it's still in the family. It's locked in. Yeah. I yeah, love yeah, yeah. that. Is it her cell phone? It's now? her cell phone now. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. cool that they let that that you could do that. Yeah, I know. I, I know. In Philly or in Philadelphia, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Wait, so so you call your parents. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They slam the photo the phone book down. It's like call your mom. And my mom's of course is like, you know, my mom's not over too overreactive, but I, she was just like, "Do you know what could have happened?" Oh, to you? this is the time for yeah. sure. It was like you, something could have, and it's true, something bad off certainly could have happened. Yeah, uh, but it didn't. We just got a little drunk, and something bad happened to one of them. I think, but <laughs> <laughs> I think she felt like it was, it was a good thing at the time. Well, when I have her on the podcast, I'll ask her all about that. But uh, that seems like it's maybe not your story no, to not tell. Mine. <laughs> Not mine to tell. I don't think they stayed together, I'll tell you that. (laughs) Did you later, did you feel, did you ever feel bad about any of this, about putting your mom through? Yeah, I felt bad immediately. I didn't want, I never got joy out of like uh, making my mom upset. I wasn't like the pyro kid that was like, yeah, well, let's get him. You know, like, and mostly I was like well adjusted and, but I, I think I had those, had to deal with that that sort of I wanted attention. I think that was probably it. Sure. I liked making people laugh. I liked but it wasn't like so bad. It was just mostly my I did well in school. Mm-hmm. Even for a comedian people be like you're why are you a stand up? You're pretty organized and well adjusted. That I'll get that a lot. Right. And it's like, well, I did get good grades. Uh but every my teachers hated me. <laughs> I mean right. like I think it was like Beth, like my comments were always like Beth talks too much. Disruptive in yeah, class. Yeah, disruptive in class. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I rem- I still have a report card that I kept because it was so funny. It, it called me a gift to society. I might even get, I got to email it to you. It, but it was Please. like, sh- but Beth's talking among others. She'll finish her work early and then talk to the other kids while they still need to be working. <laughs> Uh, but I was also the kid that, like, if we had, like, a ro- – I-, I cared about animals a lot, so we all know that it wasn't going to be a serial killer or anything. But <laughs> we, whenever any- anything would die or be killed in front of our house, I would scoop it up, carry it to the backyard, and then uh, spray the spray the area where it was with a little water bottle. I had a system. Then bury it in our, in our backyard and, uh, you know, send up a prayer. What was the spring the with the water bottle? That was just, you know, for um, the community. Yeah. To sanitize the yeah, area. Yeah, sure, sure. Just with a little water. A little, uh, I created some rain. Yeah. I took on the rule of God. <laughs> Beth, where can people find you online? You can find me at, at Beth Stelling. Like spelling, but not Tori. But it's with a T. That's right. Like Tori with a T. Sorry, everybody. It's just it's Beth very Stelling. very confusing. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and what this 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 episode will drop in April. That's how far ahead we are. And I, I pray that all of us are still alive by the time April comes. I hope so, too. Um, what would you like to tell people about? Do you have shows coming up? I know you're you're on the road a lot. You're it's always been, out there with the people. I am. I'm among the people trying to get them to remember my name when they leave the comedy club. <laughs> Do you have do you have any gigs that you know about that you can plug? Ooh, oh, I know I'll be back at at Moon Tower, but I think that's I think that's April. I'll be in Moon Tower. There we go in, in, in down Austin. in Austin, Texas. Yeah, wonderful. It's the next thing I can think of. Let me say this to you: If you are a person who lives in a town, 
Find out if Beth is coming to your town. And if she is, go see her because yeah. she's hilarious. Sweetbeth.com. I think I got that working again. Sweetbeth.com? Yeah. It was, it's been under construction for a while. Is that correct? <laughs> Listen, As most yes. people's websites are? Had a lot of cavities. <laughs> we had to go. Yeah. And it's cleaned up now. <laughs> good. This is good news for everyone. Mm -hmm. Beth, thank you so much. We're going to take a break. During the break, we will get a location from Beth for our improv. And when we return, you will meet our improvisors. All of this and nothing else when Spontanea Nation returns. Spontanea Nation with Paul F. Tompkins is brought to you by Lisa. Are you brand new to podcasts? Are you brand new to Earth? And then, and then the first thing you did was discover podcasts? Well, then you probably already know what Lisa is. <laughs> They're a mattress company. Are they a company made of mattresses? No, but I'd love to see that. If they had a factory that was made entirely of mattresses, I would visit there and I'd throw myself all over the place, all down on the work floor. Would I get caught in a machine? Yes, that is how I wish to die. Lisa has done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience that we have all suffered through. Is there anyone on earth more sadistic than mattress store employees? I mean, it's like they might as well be wearing powdered wigs and paint beauty marks on their faces and giggle, tuck, tuck a handkerchief in their sleeve. They're literally sadistic like the Marquis de Sade. Lisa, they, they've taken that away for you. You don't, you don't need that in your life. They've created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online. It ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. The 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes, and it is crafted with three unique foam layers. Let me backtrack a little bit. A lot of times when I read the phrase, the 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes, I have to stop and remind myself, all of the mattresses are 10 inches thick, but there are different sizes of uh, width, uh, depending on what kind of bed frame you have. So I'm thinking, if it's a 10-inch mattress, it doesn't come in all sizes, it comes 10 inches. Anyway, what? I just wanted you to know that's what I think of sometimes. It is crafted with three unique foam layers, including two inches of memory foam and two inches of a really cool latex-like foam called Avena that is perforated to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow while you're sleeping in it, not like out in life. This is not going... L listen... This mattress makes no promises to affect how you are perceived by other people. Maybe it will, getting better sleep will do something for your self-esteem. That remains to be seen, but that's not a guarantee. Okay? The Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA and it ships for free to anywhere in the USA and the Canada. Hey, Lisa, don't ever change this ad copy. It is perfect. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. What about my risk of death? That has nothing to do with the mattress. If you're, if you're at risk of dying in a mattress-related incident, that's not on the mattress company. That's on you somehow. Saying you're not at financial risk. That's what it means. For every 10 mattresses they sell, Lisa donates one to a shelter. I'm not even going to make any jokes about that because that's a good, positive thing. And more companies should and could do that. Go to L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT and enter promo. Oh, that's all one thing. <laughs> that's not like a web address and then a directive to slash me. Don't slash me. Lisa.com slash PFT there and enter promo code PFT at checkout. You get $75 off. And remember, don't slash me, guys. Hey guys, I want to tell you about something very cool. I know there's a lot of people that listen to this that are thinking about getting into uh, entertainment and maybe they want to get into comedy, they want to make movies. Um, I would like to tell you about the Harold Ramis Film School. It is part of the second city in Chicago and it's the first film school in the world dedicated entirely to comedic storytelling. So if you want to make comedy films, 
This is the place for you to go. This year-long program exposes students to comedy theory, the ins and outs of film production, screenwriting, improv. There are master seminars where students have the opportunity to learn from entertainment professionals at the top of their careers. Harold Ramis, who is one of my favorites of all time from Second City on, uh, loved collaborative filmmaking and utilizing the improvisation skills he learned during his time at Second City. And this method of creation will be used during the entire program. The deadline to apply for the fall session is June 1st. 15 students will be chosen. Submission periods will happen more than once throughout the year, and new students start every three months. The Harold Ramis Film School is for anyone with a love of comedy and content creation. It doesn't matter if you're just graduating high school or you're looking for a change in career. People of all experience levels and backgrounds are encouraged to apply, and scholarships are available. For more information, visit their website, RamisFilmSchool.com, R-A-M-I-S FilmSchool.com. The Second City is the alma mater of such comedic greats as Tina Fey, Bill Murray, Stephen Colbert, current SNL cast member Cecily Strong, A.D. Bryan, Vanessa Bayer. Of course, you know the pedigree of this place, so you know if they're starting a film program, it ain't no joke. So there you go, guys. Check it out, and I'll see you on the silver screen. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to pick a favorite ad because they're like your children. But that one, pretty great. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, people who never went anywhere. Everything's still the same. <laughs> you're still, you're a person on Earth. It is time to meet... Our improviser, friends, seated right next to me. She <laughs> is reacting like the angel of death is flying over her home. <laughs> she is my colleague from the Know You Shut Up program. She is the host of her own podcast mm -hmm. called My First Time. Mm -hmm. She's so funny. I love her. Colleen Smith. Yay! Colleen, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Paul. Colleen, how have you been? Um, I have done something to the left side of my body. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to guess what it is? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have somehow managed <coughs> to traumatize my left rib cage. Oh. And it's migrated and it's moved and it's been like I've been heating it and getting massages. Yeah, because the other day at work you were saying your back yeah. was hurting you. And now it's like, it's a different place and I keep sneezing and I can't get through a full sneeze because I'll get to that like play, that like catch in a sneeze and then it'll like this horrible shocking pain will oh, go God. through my rib cage and so it'll prevent the sneeze from completing. So I've had like a hundred non sneezes in the last week. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what happens? You just, like, the sneeze just shuts down? Yeah, it all... I'll be, you your know, body is concerned now with the pain. Yeah, because you know you're that, like, huh, 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 and then, like, there's, like, a, uh, and then a chew. Like, I hit the, uh, and then something goes, uh, like, some oh muscle tightens. Oh. And then there's no chew. <laughs> and it's mad. How did you... I don't know. <laughs> you can ask a question. You can ask a question. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I literally. Wait, but what is your question? <laughs> oh, how did you do it? Like, I you know? went to sleep Monday night <laughs> uh. and woke up Tuesday morning and it was all jacked. And the worst part, it's like, I was like, you've been drinking too much, Colleen. Like, maybe take a break. And so, no. like, I had a good night's sleep Sunday night and, like, a good night's sleep Monday night. So I think actually literally having a good night's sleep. And not moving that much, not being mm -hmm. drunk and getting up constantly to pee, <laughs> that like I managed to just like have a sleep strain. What? You're too well rested. Yeah, where you, you should sleep be drunker. in a bad position and then like you don't wake up. Like, you know, when you wake up and your like arm is 100% dead because yeah. you've been mm -hmm. sleeping on it? I think that's what I did. Am I correct in uh, assuming this is all self diagnosed? Yeah, oh yeah, I okay. would never go to a doctor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have the number of like 18 chiropractors that people have told me to go to, and I'm like, all right, I'll take care of this myself. Oh, but you, so you haven't seen anyone about this? I've seen him a couple of masseuses and they. <laughs> and a couple of bartenders. <laughs> a couple of bartenders. Uh, no, I've, I've taken ibuprofen and masseured it. I, just for me? Yeah. Personally? Yeah. Where I'm from? Yeah. I hope eventually you go to a doctor? <laughs> But you live your life. Where I'm from, you never go to the doctor. <laughs> like, my mom's a nurse, so you never go. Oh, because she'll just tell you what's yeah, going on? she'll be like, put a sling on, you're fine. Have you talked to her yet? No, she would tell me to go to the doctor. Oh. <laughs> Let's move on. Sitting across from Colleen. <laughs> 
coming back to Spontaneous Nation. Two in a row? Were you just on the last episode? Yes, sir. <laughs> Get ready for the same characters, same <laughs> accents, different names. Boy, isn't it hard to come up with different voices? <laughs> it really, really is. It's tough. I'm leaving. If you do more than three things, it's like, well, those are my three things. <laughs> Hope you liked it. And then I just mm, pull my chair back. <laughs> Stephanie Courtney! Hey! Stephanie, welcome back to the Thank show. Thank you. How have you been since the last time I've seen you? I'm good. Um, I haven't pulled any muscles in my sleep, and neither has <laughs> anyone else in this life. Get it checked out, Colleen. Get it checked out, Colleen. <laughs> the <laughs> admonishments <laughs> of friends. <laughs> um, no, I'm very well. Uh, what's happening? Uh, as of today, there was the most incredible magical wind. Yes, that's Santa? right. Oh, my God. Santa Anas are happening. Oh, heavens. Just are they the Santa Anas? Because they're not particularly hot. I Santa Anas know. are always hot. My husband and I are from New York, and we always say, Oh! We always say, Oh! <laughs> That's oh. it! You knew it! <laughs> we always say, like, weather in New York is just a daily occurrence, but in California, it's always like, Oh, these are the winds! Yeah. These are the, you know what I mean? It's always right. a, the something. Right. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yes. The like, thing, I lived in New York for a year, and the thing that was very difficult for me, because I had lived in Los Angeles for such a long time before that, was having to be prepared for several weather systems throughout the day. Yes. <laughs> yes. And when especially in the winter and you get you have all your layers on the you know the subway and then you sweat, sweat through all everything. Then you get back out of the cold, your sweat cooling. Yep. Ugh. And then you get into the overheated buildings where you're just like, ah, and then just every year like bronchitis, like That's ding, right. Ding. It's bronchitis January. time. Bronchitis, yes. Do you miss New York? Do you miss I, living there? I do a whole lot. I don't get back as much as I should or want to, but um, yeah, that's nice. I grew up in a nice place. It was very pretty. But can you imagine being a parent in New York, lugging a car seat around, putting it in a cab? I saw that one time. It was bleak. No, no. It was no. like that hour of the day in New York. It's after. It's like the sun has gone uh, past where it's visible anymore. Yeah. But there's still light in the sky, and it's just like everything's gray and cold and sad. And when you come home into your apartment, you're just like, you just wipe your arm. It's just like soot. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's seriously like the Industrial Revolution. You're just like, oh, I just right, spent a exactly. day. And then you're like, ah, there's a layer of. Yeah. What is this Charles Dickens shit? <laughs> I don't know what it is. New York, get it together. I mean, seriously. If you want me back. <laughs> you got to meet Stephanie's terms. Sitting next to Stephanie, what a delight <laughs> to have this goofball back on the show. <laughs> it's been too long. It's been too long. You've been a busy little bee. I've been a busy little bee. I feel like I'm diminishing you. <laughs> I'm a small, very small human. <laughs> but I feel like I'm making you smaller. It is fine. Or are you getting farther away from me? I'm just is- moving. I'm on, my chair is on wheels, <laughs> so the perspective is very tricky. Please welcome back the very tricky Sarah Burns. <laughs> Buzz buzz. So, buzz buzz, Whoa. everyone. Her signature the catchphrase. Again. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. I also lived in New York. I know you did. Mm-hmm. For a long time, right? Quite as long as I possibly could. I I gripped the earth of New York and Brooklyn as long as I could before it was time. You miss it. You miss I do. It. But you I, like living here okay, right? You know, I'm, far, I'm finally starting to accept it. I've cried a lot when I moved here. I'd, yeah. It'd be like, what's pretty about this place? And 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 like, I don't know. I don't, and you know, I tried. And where's then that I, smell of hot garbage? Yeah, well, I, I really miss stepping in human waste. But um, and I do, with Paul, I do. But I um, I've learned to accept I can step in my own human waste. Take, take a shit in your living room. <laughs> Who hasn't? Who's with? Do the mashed potato in there? <laughs> oh God, it's like it's like you know wine country every day in my place. But, um, <laughs> but with human. Human feces. Yeah, my own. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, and that's limiting because, but, you know, I, I love it, it, it here. Limiting. I'm a good, no, I don't know if I love it yet. I'm just like committed. How long have you been here? Almost five years. Ooh. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah. I know. It's, it's a bit, nothing, it's like, some it's say. Nothing. It's nothing. It's like, I'm getting there. You know, I like hiking and whatnot. Can nice. I say one great feature about Los Angeles? Sarah Burns lives here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm a good guy. Her feet stink, but yeah. All right. What? Her feet stink. <laughs> her feet. But. Her f- get a- stay away from them. <laughs> get away and stay away. Run. From her feet. Run. And you refuse to wear shoes. I won't do it, Paul. <laughs> I, w- I won't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, during the break, we secured our location from Beth Selling, and we are ready to begin our story 
just so's you know. In order to aid us in our storytelling, we have these sound effects that move us about in time. If we're in one scene and we want to go to what's happening at the exact same time somewhere else, a meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. Let's say we're going to travel to the past. Somebody's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. You will hear this flash back sound effect. Let's say we're returning to the present day or going into the mysterious future. <laughs> You'll hear this flash forward sound effect. Right? Guys, you get it. All right. Now, here we go. Here's our location. Provided to us by Beth Stelling. That location is... <laughs> I almost read the question. The question made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what in? Here's the here's the location. Inside that Salvador Dali painting with the melting clocks. Oh, a momentary <laughs> lapse of being. Is that what it's Is that called? What it's called? I think. I don't know. I asked the question and then <laughs> bailed on the answer. Is this a thing that you actually know, but you're trying to? You don't want to appear too smart because we demonize intelligence in this country. Um, I'm never going to have that problem. Uh, but I, I think it's, I think it's a momentary lapse of being or a momentary lapse of memory. I bet someone will look it up and tell us. Persistence of memory. Persistence uh, of memory. Shit, that's right. Sorry. You were thinking of some fucking Simon and Garfunkel title. <laughs> The, the mannequin soundtrack is always... <laughs> You're always thinking... You stop thinking about I the mannequin obsessed. soundtrack. I'm, I'm hardwired a certain way and I can't... We take you now to inside of that Salvador Dali painting with the melting clocks. Hey, um... Forgive me, I know this is probably an annoying question. Mm-hmm. I'm new here. Mm-hmm. Could you tell me what the actual time is? Mm-hmm. Time is a, a riddle. Riddle, yeah. Time wraps itself around us mm. like a coil of a spring that has never sprung, like a dewdrop mm-hmm. that falls up into the cloud. Time is nothing and everything. All is time. You can just say you don't know. For 40 it's Seven. Four, it's 4.47. A.M. or P.M. Uh, you don't know if it's day or if it's morning or afternoon? 4.47 is the exact time when no one can tell if it's A.M. or P.M. Well, if it, uh, Look to the sky. I, yeah. A.M. or P.M. It's all gray. P.M. A.M. It could be early morning or it could be almost dusk. Mm. Howdy, stranger. Oh, hello. <laughs> Pardon me, I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to speak to my compatriot here. Are hello. you going to kick in for the exterminator to get rid of all these ants? No. <laughs> I told you, I wash my dishes. You um, can't pay an exterminator in telling him how you do your chores on the chore well, wheel. I, well, no, what I'm saying is I didn't contribute to the ant problem, so I don't understand why I I eat food that ants. crumbles. Oh, well. Can you send a jack here? When I was brought into this job, mm-hmm. I was told I was going to be paid half up front and half after I finished, and I finished, and I've not received half up front. I just, I just want to do my job, get rid of these ants, and be on my merry way. I would... Would, would Terminex take a letter of intent? Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Mm-hmm. The, you are. This, yeah. Oh, I well, want, yeah. I guess I do mean to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, don't don't say what you mean to do and then not do what you that, mean That's to say. entirely fair, and I, I do apologize. Mm-hmm. Um, my name is Tim. Tim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very that's good name. M- Solid name. That's Mitt backwards. That's true. This is what I've been dealing with all morning, trying to get this. Oh, you seem reasonable. What's your name? Uh, it's Edgar. Edgar, uh, and who and who are these people? You guys all work together. <laughs> I work for Terminex. I'm a sub. I contract. Oh, I do course. my own. I'm my own boss, basically. But I just have to pay, kind of like you know. You're wearing a uniform. Yes, yeah. I should have known. And we are the spirit and intent of this painting. Literally, mm-hmm. my name is Intent. And oh, her name so is spirit. This I am in a painting. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I was just taking a walk. Right? Mm. I live in New York. Mm. Greatest city in the world. Mm. Yeah. And Very dirty. 
It's. Do you think so? A lot of soot. I think that's charming. Like a lot when of you, soot. Yeah, yeah, you get it at the end of the day, and you just, you just wipe all that rush, soot yeah, off your arm. You're like, what is this? Off. You know the uh, industrial revolution. Yeah, but what I do is I wipe the the soot off onto my uh, kitchen, dining room, bathroom table. Oh, yeah. And uh, and then I draw designs in there, like a little mandala. You like know? a wash me. <laughs> well, I won't lie. I started out with Wash Me. That it's was, a classic. <laughs> it's a classic. Every last. But then over time, I would like a like a, a monk would do. I would make a little design, and then I would. Uh, oh, yeah. Is it you know, a like point blow to it away. your story? Uh, oh yeah. Um, so said spirit. I, I yeah. I intent. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I mean, I I, I don't know um, where I'm supposed to be, but I feel like I'm supposed to know what time it is. Does that make any sense? Supposed is a word that we really look down on. Yeah. Yeah. Supposed is like a, a present you expect on a holiday that doesn't exist, but is marked on the calendar and you get half pay for going to work on that day. Yeah, see, this isn't a holiday. I thought I was going to be paid fully. And I got another, I got a salad, an egg salad sandwich waiting for me in my car. I got another job this <laughs> you afternoon. You should not leave an egg salad sandwich in your car. I, see, I thought this was going to be bing, bang, boom. Mommy, 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 yes, mommy. There's an egg salad sandwich in that car. We should rescue it. I think I think if we rescue this egg salad sandwich right now, someone's going to be very, very... You know what? You're right. Yeah. I mean, uh, egg salad sandwiches are like ducks. They can't be in hot cars for very long. If, if you touch the sidewalk with your hand and it's too hot to push your hand on the sidewalk for five seconds, then that means a dog can't walk on it. Which So, like, I touched that car and it was too hot, which means that egg salad sandwich is dying and we got to right. save it, Mom. I don't want to see my baby d- digging a hole. May I? May I interject? Yes, please. Are you quite certain that the egg salad sandwich is in the car? Or that the car is around the egg salad sandwich? Oh, gosh. Mommy, is this stranger danger? Mommy, is this stranger danger? He doesn't look dangerous yet. Let's talk to him a little more. Okay. Maybe he could help us. He looks very strong. Maybe he could help us, like, break one of these windows. We're rescuing this egg salad. Oh. Or we're destroying the mother car to the womb of... (laughs) I'm (laughs) being... You're new here, aren't you? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, I can tell the both of you are new here. Yeah. You seem to have, you seem like the kind of people who would have proper names. You mean like, uh, like Regina or like a Mr. or a Mrs. before it? What do you mean? I mean names, not like words or concepts like most of us have here. Oh, 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 yeah. I'm mother and this is my child daughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe you're not as new here as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so I, oh, oh, no. I'm so sorry. I needed to speak to your father for just one moment. You know, I called build bear and they said that you were not at work, nor have you been at work for the last two weeks. Now, I'm just wondering, what in the heck are you doing with your days? I am walking the streets, making sure that people understand that all is not as it seems. Children, I want you to go and hotwire the television and get it to work. <laughs> Because I have to just thank you. God damn, I hope their voices drop. (laughs) How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to put food on the table? Food on the table or table under the food? God damn it. You are never going to be a professor of philosophy ever. You tried. You tried. And it didn't work out. I feel like I got some good questions about life and stuff. Everyone, uh, thank you for coming to the Metropolitan Museum of Art Yay! Social Mixer. <laughs> um, as you know, we have the Dolly on loan. Ooh, all oh, this. Day. It's beautiful. Oh. It's beautiful to see it in person. This it's, is wonderful. Isn't it smaller than you thought it would be? I th- it's so oh. much smaller oh. than I thought it would be. But look how melty the clocks are. So this good. really oh. is tremendous. There's a giraffe burning in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, I hate them. <laughs> Hey, do you guys, spirit, intent, do you hear that? No. The, the scoffing, uneducated opinions of people that look at us? Yeah. Oh, it's people looking at the painting. No. It's why this painting pulled you in. Why? Wait, what are you saying to me? We are a painting that is commonly, commonly, sorry, mocked and ridiculed and misunderstood. Reduced, misunderstood, reduced. Ca- at calendars all over the world yes. without our permission. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Edgar, have you been in this painting the whole time or, or? Yeah, I showed up for like 45 years ago to get this job done and I we've been haggling for years. Yep. How did you end up in the painting? Oh, Edgar, uh, 
doing Terminix. How can I help you? Just hold on a second. I've gotten out of the shower and I'm dressing. Uh, <laughs> spirit, uh, we're on the phone. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, um, I'm calling from inside a painting. You mean a speaker, I assume, yeah? <laughs> yes. Now I'm All dressed. Right. Uh, All right, good. Uh, Just two of you back there. All right. What we, do you need? We were uh, wondering if you could come to. Uh, well, presently, we are on loan to the. Uh, um, the Shackleton <coughs> Museum the, of, of Ideas. Yes. Uh, we were wondering if you could come. We have an ant problem. Oh, sure. You want that uh, drippy, drippy looking. Uh, well, we, you know, we like to call That's it an right. avant-garde yeah. look at time and space and relative uh, <clears throat> relations with... Uh, Burning giraffes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I've done a lot of work in paintings. I uh, dealt with that, uh, that, that the Francis Bacon painting with that weird dog. Yeah. He's moving. I had to tame that guy down. Yeah. Real so. quick, uh, we don't have snacks, so bring a... That's fine. Uh, yeah, I always travel to sandwich... Egg salad, tuna salad, chicken salad, whatever you got. And that was 45 years ago. Oh, yeah, jeez. Yeah, well, time flies. You know, you like go, you spray a couple ants, you do a little haggling, and then you look up 45 years later. Time passes differently. Inside the waste is twice Wait, so, so maybe Edgar hasn't been here for 45 years. Maybe oh. it's been less time than that. Maybe no time at all has passed since you entered this painting. Or since uh, I've entered this painting. Oh, the uh, only way to tell would probably be by the egg salad sandwich. The only way anyone can tell time. The barometer of, of time. Yes. Is that egg salad sandwich in your car? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in my van. <laughs> Mommy. Sweetie daughter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm breaking the glass. You should do it, sweetie. Oh. We don't want to bury another egg salad sandwich in our backyard. <laughs> no. Hello again. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Rich. Your name's Richard? <sighs> You don't you, have you a... You can call me Richard. I yeah. prefer to be called the concept. Okay. Like, like the concept of Richard or... That'll do. The concept of Richard. Okay. Yes. Are you about to break that window and retrieve that egg salad sandwich? The concept we should because this egg salad sandwich looks like it's struggling for air and overheating. Richard! Richard! Dear, honey, please. Richard! Dear... Dear, why did you follow me? Because I went to Build a Bear, and you weren't here. <laughs> oh they my, said that you muttered to, with Build a Bear. You muttered to yourself and walked out in this direction. I followed you. Don't oh. you understand? They were asking me to put hearts inside bears rather than bears around hearts. Yeah, I changed diapers all day, and they're fifteen. Our twins. And yet the diapers remain the same. Don't get philosophical with me. It's all I can do. Don't you understand? It's my thing. What is this hijinks? Well, we uh, we noticed. I'm a I'm one of those kids that actually cares about the world, and I noticed <laughs> She's a gift to society. Yeah, I'm a real gift to society. Um, I noticed there's an egg salad sandwich inside a car that was sweating outside okay. of its saran wrap, and we decided to liberate it. Well, and what? the concept of Richard is gonna help us. Okay, well, if this is your new life calling, Richard, let's see what you got. Here's what we must determine. Uh huh. If that egg salad sandwich is freed from that car, is it truly the same egg salad sandwich? Oh. Or no, yeah, of course it is. Daughter, he sandwich. brings up a point. Do you have a name? What? No, my name's Daughter. Okay. This is Daughter and this is Mother. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> she was named Mother by her mother so that she would be a mother. My mom had a very prescribed idea about my future. Yeah, what, what she told her it wasn't her fault. My mother was, um, my mother was a square. I beg your pardon? My mother was a square. Like not a cool person? Or no, she was, she was a, a, like a, a box, a two-dimensional. Mm. Then you'll probably understand this. If we were to break this egg salad sandwich mm -hmm. out of the car, who knows what we could be affecting in this whole world? You have a point. Thank you. Uh-oh, you guys, what's going to happen? Our mother, daughter, the concept of Richard... And his wife <laughs> going to break that egg salad sandwich out of the car? And if they do, what does that mean for the world inside the Salvador Dali painting with all the melting clocks? We'll find out when Spontanea Nation returns! CISO! 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 
Hi, I'm Peter Gabriel. I'm doing a fun song parody to my song about Stephen Biko to tell you about Seasno.com. <laughs> Sorry, I have a cold. Seasno.com is a premium streaming service that features original series, quotable classics, next day late night stand-up specials, and uh, you can get Seasno.com, uh, all the programs at the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV. I think uh, Apple TV is coming pretty soon, too. It's just three ninety nine a month. That's three dollars and ninety nine cents, not three hundred ninety nine dollars. You'd think it would be because it's such a great deal, but uh, you get all access membership. Uh, you get stuff like CISO original series, every episode of classic series like Kids in the Hole, Monty Python, oh from England like me, Thirty Rock and Alan Partridge, another cherished British show that I grew up watching as a kid, or maybe I was an adult. And you can start as a guest, no credit card needed. There's new content added weekly. And uh, you get it on all these things. You know, Roku, Amazon Fire, Chromecast, mobile devices. And here's the thing. They got great shows like Bajillion Dollar Properties. That's right. It's a CISO original. You can't find it anywhere else. It's from the minds of Reno 911 and Comedy Bang Bang. It's uh, semi-scripted means they make shit up. Uh, you know, they're like goofing around. They're having a good time. Everybody's just, uh, you know, yes and and all over the place. And it's like uh, it's like Reno nine one one set in million dollar listing. You know what I mean? You get do you get that? Do you get those two things? Look, I don't get everything because uh, I'm an eccentric uh, British guy. Uh, I was in Genesis. It's about uh, real estate agents at a super luxury platinum realty group. They ex exclusively sell properties to and for bajillionaires. Now that's not a real word, but the idea is like these people are silly wealthy, like I am. Remember my album So. Did real good. Sledgehammer was a gigantic hit. It was like hit after hit with that record. Uh, Sledgehammer, In Your Eyes, featuring You Soon the Door. Um, a lot of great cuts, classic cuts. Who Can Forget Say Anything? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Joe Cusack's brother. Holding the uh, boombox over his head. Anyway, there's new episodes available every week on Thursdays. And uh, cast and guest stars include uh, guest stars like Adam Scott, Andy Richter, Ratio Sands. Uh, you got uh, uh, people of the cast like, uh, oh, let's name them all. Dan Adut, Tim Baltz, uh, Ryan Gall, uh, Mandel Morn, Tony Newsom, Drew Tava. Oh, and who's this? Paul F. Tompkins. That guy sounds pretty funny. <laughs> I'm joking. I know he's the host of the show, so I'm... Uh, I'm teasing a little bit. I'm having a good time. Hey, what am I supposed to do? I'm locked up here in my castle, just uh, counting my money. So, uh, it's getting a lot of good write-ups in the press. Uh, it's been called Breakthrough and an addictively ribald series. Now, ribald is an old English word we used to use all the time. Uh, things that are bawdy. As, uh, you don't know what that means? A little bit naughty, like having some fun in a sexual way. Saying things you're not supposed to see. All right, so you got to get this. Go to CISO.com, sign up, get your thing, you know, your membership so you can watch all this stuff. You can watch Bajillion Dollar Properties only on CISO. You're not going to find this anywhere else. It is a hilarious cutthroat fake reality show that will be a new pleasure. It says in the copy, guilty pleasure? Don't be guilty about it. It's just good. Feel good about yourself. Like I felt good leaving Genesis and starting a solo career. My first three albums had no name. Go to CISO.com, watch the fake drama unfold of bajillion dollar properties. Just for fun, the asset properties is a dollar sign. <laughs> that's fun. That's fun. Even I admit that's fun. Start watching free? Yes, free to start. This is where it becomes like a drug deal. First one is free. But then you got to pay once you get hooked. And hooked, you will get my friend. Because this is a funny show. Bajillion Dollar Properties. CISO.com. The two great tastes that taste great together. Like the jingle I wrote for Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. A lot of people don't know that. But how do you think I ended up in a castle? It wasn't all dressed in a giant flower costume. Anyway, that's enough out of Peter Gabriel. I'll see you in heaven when I die and you are dead. Man, I don't know, Edgar. I think it's worth trying to get out of this painting. And somehow, are you saying that this egg salad sandwich might have something to do with it? You say you always travel with an egg salad sandwich. I always travel. Well, I travel with any type of salad sandwich. Oh. Tuna salad, Tuna chicken salad, salad. Chicken salad. I've even done one of those vegan salad sandwiches.
Uh, Warden number uh, 45, Vegan Salad Sandwich. Uh, hold the uh, pickles and uh, coleslaw substitute uh, uh, chips and french fries. Yeah. That's me. Oh, uh, you, you, uh, you got, I got two people here. I got the exact same order. No, I'm the cook. I just said got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me ask you a question. Is this thing any good? I thought, you know, I'm always doing egg. I'm always doing chicken. I'm always doing tuna or something. I've done a ham sandwich. Lady. That was not good. Yeah, ham salad. Yeah. That's like, why don't you go fuck yourself? Yeah, the answer's in the name. Ham salad. Ham no, salad. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. straight out of a pig's egg. I don't, look, that's not yeah. for me. Yeah. Lady man, I don't brag about my work. I don't think it's seemly. But when I take these eggs. Yeah. And I cut them into tiny little symmetrical pieces. Oh, and you cut them. Yeah. Add a nice piece of frickin' blue ribbon mayonnaise. Oh, symmetrical. Geez. That's the that's way you look at it. Up. You I do the shit. Symmetrical? I that's do what make I've been sure noticing. That. I notice it with my eyes. I notice it with my mouth as it, like, <laughs> skates over my tongue and I swallow it. Yeah, I feel like if the pieces are symmetrical, it kind of puts you in a, in a frame of mind where anything's possible, you know? Uh, time, space, <laughs> all that stuff. What do I know? I'm a cook. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> Well, this, this thing is good. I mean, it's got dill in it. Mm. That cook sounded very committed to his work. Oh, he's like the maestro. Wait, who? I'm sorry, who are you? Hi, guys. I'm the giraffe that's not on fire. Oh! oh. And, um, I'm on stilts. And I just wanted to say that all of you, I swear to God, uh, we don't have a TV here. We don't have any entertainment. But you guys are, I just love you all. You know. Bernard, could you help me over here, please? I'm still on fire. Oh, you'll be all right. Oh, jeez. Yep, you got it. Um, I hate her so much. <laughs> oh, God. You know, day. we actually, we do want to get you guys out of this painting. We hate this painting. We wish we were in the Don Quixote paintings. <sighs> there's just so much less abstract and clearer and, you know, just well, there's a story there. Dolly did much better work when he was... Would you want to join us in the outside world <sighs> where, where Edgar and I come from? Could we, would we, should we, could we? <laughs> it's so it. much less abstract. I know, a great deli. We could get a bunch of sandwiches and we could just have like a picnic or whatnot. Do they have vegan salad sandwiches? Oh, God, forget. It's good, you know? It's not like as bland as you would think. Do you know what I always wanted to try? Yeah. A fruit salad sandwich. Oh, this, oh, the cook? He could do that. Really? Yeah, he did something with a star fruit once Blew my mind. Hey, Blew guys. Mind. Guys, um, mm. as a draft on stilts, I'm just afraid mm. that I'd be, like, shot down for the freak that I am when we go into the regular Well, nobody invited Look at your you pair of boots. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's draft. <laughs> pair of boots. <laughs> to cover the stilts. Yeah. Well, you could just get off the stilts. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> oh, great. That's an easy sell. The more the merrier. All right. All right. We're going to look like a bunch of nut jobs walking around with a... Who am I to judge? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm coming up with something. Yes, spirit. This painting is all about time as a circle. It's right. melting. What if we had like a perfect square shaped thing that could fit into it? Could that be the key to get us out of it? Perfect could be square shape. We need someone, or I mean, something, or someone, as strange as that sounds, to be a perfect square shape. Like a maternal figure. Mm. That's a leap, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds right for some reason. Feels good. Why don't we go get in your car? Yeah. And we'll drive around and look for someone like that. Yeah. Okay? This is it. Uh, don't please excuse the mess. Oh, but, you know. Hey, excuse me. Uh oh. Are you the person who left your egg salad sandwich unattended? Yeah, or yeah. did you leave your car enveloping an egg salad sandwich? I did a little bit of both, but I cracked the window. Richard, that- this is an imbroglio. I don't want to be involved. Dear, please, this is the stuff of life. This is when we figure things out. All right. Crack the window. I'd like to see you sit in a car with the window cracked. Well, I, you know, I thought I was going to be gone for like a couple minutes. You know, this guy's fine. He travels. He's very young. He's got a great lung capacity. Your egg salad sandwich has great lung capacity? Yeah. Eggs. You know, chickens. Oh, chickens. I see. Yes. Chickens, eggs. Are chickens known for their great lung capacity? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you ever hear them? They're very loud. Yeah, they're like the, uh... <laughs> Welcome to the Chicken Festival. Welcome to last year's winner of the longest to sustain note. Oh, Diane, I love, I love, I love Chicken Festival. I've, I've never heard a cluck I didn't love. Well, here's this year's attendee. Let's have Mrs. Feathers. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 
Guess you're eating your words. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't know that about about chicken. Well, I hope I hope Mrs. Feathers won. Oh, when does she not? <laughs> she, is she like a celebrity around here? Yeah, everyone's yeah. heard of Mrs. Chicken. Where you been? I've never. Look at my t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Feathers yeah. forevers. Yeah. That's interesting. She's a card. She's a card. Is Don't she take really? a bet with her. She won uh, last year's Grammy. <laughs> what? And the winner of the Grammy for best sustained cluck goes to, oh, I love my job. Mrs. Feathers. Uh, hi, uh, this is Kanye West, and I just want to say this is an unfair system of voting. Uh, I'm sorry to do this. Your, your cooking is great, but this should have gone. Okay, well, I guess mother and daughter are going to leave unless you guys have any interest in our backstory that our my grandmother and my mother's mother is a square. Did wait, someone, wait, what? Oh, wait. Did someone what? mention my name? I just missed you and baked cookies. Hi. Oh, mom is here. Careful Hi, hugging me. Hey, grandma. Look at her. Hi, daughter and daughter. Edgar, look at her. Uh, yes, she's, she's a perfect square. She's very maternal. Yeah, no, I, but she's more than that. Oh, yeah. She's yeah, like yeah, a actually, square. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes I miss the flowers for the trees. Yeah, I think I'm it's very hungry. Bit. Well, I go to J. Jill and they teach me how to dress, so it takes away from my corners. Ah. She go to where? I go to J. Jill. They teach me how to dress for my shape. I'm a... Oh, whatever. I wear ruffles and large shoulder pads. Man. <laughs> yes. We are from an abstract painting. Great, I'm in. <laughs> oh, no, I oh Mom, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you call more. Oh, I'm sorry, I... Have a Grandma, I gotta say, you look like you have a waist in that outfit. Oh, it's a large belt with a heavy buckle. Where are we going? <laughs> well, we're going to um, wherever we came from. <laughs> we were in that painting, and then oh, we were gonna go stop at the deli. Well, we're we're Get some all more sandwiches. we're in the painting, no matter where we go, right? Isn't this the world of the painting? No, we've left the world of the painting, and now we're where are we now? The, we're in the parking lot, looking at an egg salad sandwich, sweating inside of a car. Oh, egg salad you know, let me just open this door. What are we on? Hold on a second. Are we on Earth? Where are we? Yes, we've left the painting that's inside the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and now we're in the parking lot, which is odd because well, they wait, don't have well, a parking lot. Why did we need the square lady then? Because we needed her to go, take us, go back with us into the painting. No, I don't want to go back in the painting. I don't want to. I want to live here Here's the thing. on Earth. Whenever you get my mom on board with something and you tell her we're doing it, she doesn't like to change her mind. She gets very angry. I tell the assisted living facility that I have plans. They know that I'm gone for the day. I mean, things have been arranged. She's they very call rigid. grandma a spark plug. <laughs> uh, okay. You don't want to get on her back. Ma'am, I need you to just... Uh, I just want to organize a talent show or something. All right, I well... Mean, let's jazz this place up. Most of the, <laughs> most of the people who live here yeah. are in long-term comas. Well, that's their <laughs> choice. Get up! I oh. want to have fun. I want to start a card game. It's called elderly abuse. What you're doing is elderly abuse. Oh, really? Well, I knew a chicken that sustained a note, and she oh. rose out of a chicken farm and became a star. That's all I know. She's an inspiration. You're at the end of your rainbow, not at the beginning and or middle. All I know is I have a day off starting tomorrow and I'm going to change the world. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm extremely confused. Now, I just wanted to get out of the painting, right? Me and Edgar wanted to get out of the painting back to Earth. Mm. Uh, I feel like we're back to Earth. We're in the parking lot of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yes. I'm good as far as anyone that's concerned. Like, this is where I want to be. Yeah. So what do we need the square lady for? You're trying to get back into the painting or? Well, time's a circle. Yeah. That's what I'm picking up on. But he keeps saying that. I don't understand what it means. You know what I just realized? (gasps) The Metropolitan Museum of Art doesn't have a parking lot. Because That's true. Means. And the parking lot doesn't have a Metropolitan Museum of Art. No, that one doesn't work. Sorry, guys. Which means we are still in the painting. Oh, boy, jeez. Oh. Wait, are we in a I painting never unlocked of a that parking car lot? I never took my sandwich shot. I'm so hungry. I'm going to get faint. This is the yeah. best day of my life. It's the best day of my life. <laughs> why Why are you so happy? <laughs> because we're having an adventure. Grandma is yeah. at the end of a rainbow, which means she's going to die soon. So she needs as many experiences as possible. We try to keep her busy. We try to visit. I don't call very much. No, you don't. That, That's you know. a thing. I know. It's an issue. It always comes up. Every rainbow it begins at the The concept ending. of Richard, how many times <sighs> do I have to tell you that long speeches of metaphor and simile are mine? 
All right. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make my thing mm -hmm. where I just reverse what someone says yeah, and make well. it sound trippy. Well, do you know what I mean? Is it working? Oh, God, get around. I got a few good ones in. I did get a few oh, good ones really in. Really, list them off. Let me, let me hear it. Okay. Um, there was the thing about the egg salad sandwich. Is yeah. it inside the car? Is the car around the egg salad sandwich? All that right, really stopped that, people that in really their tracks. That's built on her build a bear. Is Richard. The heart inside of a bear. Richard. Bear right, that's another good one. I cleaned that But it's well. kind of the same. Yes, so yes, flirting dear, with other women? This, my, this, 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 this is my wife, Thelonia. I have never seen you feel so comfortable and alive with another human being. And I know, and I'm a fifth wheel. Salonia, please. I'm going to walk over into this weird desert. I'm following, I'm following the ants. Yeah. And I'm just going to go out and, and good luck. You, you're okay. being, please, Thelonia, please. Don't Tell go. our children I love them. Don't eat any of the ants because a lot of them have ingested the poison. And if you bring it home, you track it and you can get in your jeans and be weird. Thank you. <laughs> your dungarees, not your... <laughs> not the, not your DNA. No, not your DNA. This, <laughs> it's you know basically just an enzyme, but okay. yeah, get in your jeans and be uncomfortable. Okay, so guys, we're inside a Salvador Dali painting, inside a parking lot, inside the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We have a uh, mother daughter, the concept of Richard. That's right. We have space and illusion, spirit and spirit intent. and, spirit and intent. intent. We have Thelonia. We have Square. Oh, Edgar? What am I? An Edgar? Yeah. Uh, my name's Tim. And, Tim. And a sandwich. Yeah, oh, an egg salad yeah. sandwich. Yeah. The sandwich. It's hot to the touch. But <laughs> I don't think that could matter very I much could, in the end. I think it matters. Egg salad sandwiches are supposed to be cold to room temperature. Yeah. And eggs are the beginning of life. It's Or maybe the chickens the beginning of life. <gasps> Or, or are eggs the end of chickens? Or is it is just the one? constant circle of the chicken and the egg and the egg and the chicken and the turning yes. and the turning that eventually is your life? Yes, Edgar, the ants, very profound. The ants. Does the daughter have an aunt? Oh. <gasps> yeah. Oh. She, she's a very free spirit. You. So you do have a sister? I do. Where is she right now? Go land. Darling, <laughs> why are you climbing out that window? <laughs> you can just walk out the front door. The window poses. Uh, I'm going to college at Dayton University. Oh. And I'm giggling away. <laughs> oh. Hi, I'm so sorry. I'm your downstairs neighbor. And um, <laughs> twice a week, I have to deal with your wife. <laughs> climbing down our outside my window. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, Making my that wife look. is a free spirit. Hi, she does I'm she so sorry. In. I'm your upstairs neighbor. And um, <laughs> three times a week, I have to deal with your wife climbing up our drain pipe. I love to climb. Pipe and and, <laughs> and, uh, and hovering outside our window. Oh, goodness. Saying. That's what she does. She's a free spirit, don't you see? That's why I married her. We are taking this to the landlord. We have organized Ooh. as a yeah. building. Oh, dear. We this are sandwiching you. Ooh, You're doing sandwiches. what? We're sandwiching you. She's on the bottom, bottom and I'm on the top. You're making a sandwich of my wife? That sounds funky. Hmm? <laughs> so. Mm. We don't talk to her very much. She's doing her own thing. Okay. But so she, she's not really important to well, maybe what not. we need to do it, here. There was a moment there where I thought she was inside a sandwich. So maybe <laughs> there was some significance. Oh, she's, if, she, if she could be in a, inside a sandwich, she would be. She was the favored one. I love you both exactly the same. <laughs> All right, so um, with this riddle we have to solve. Some people belong inside a painting. Some people belong outside of it. Yeah, I belong outside the painting. I'll so, say that straight up. Okay. I want to get paid for this job. Edgar, don't you want to be outside the painting with me? Yeah, listen, if I can get, if there's a deli around this painting, I'm good. As long as I can get my salads into between pieces of bread. I, There's I, a look, commissary in the gift shop. In the, boom, I'm done. A commissary really in the gift shop. Oh. If you get tired from uh, shopping for gifts, you can just sit down and eat there. You get one of those scarves that looks like look, 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 a Monet. Yeah. And you yeah. wrap it around your neck and you... I like the you get a starry like, night tie. Yeah, starry yeah. night. Oh. Like a stained glass window. Yeah. And, yeah. You, and you can put it in your... And then like a bird window. ornament. Yeah. Each one yeah. is very, very special. Very overpriced. All right, so look. All right. How do we get out of this painting? All what right. do we do? Well, 
Time is a flat circle. Mm, yes. Eggs beget life. Right. Uh, Drafts are very flammable. Yeah. Rainbows have, end. Rainbows mm. end. You belong to the ants after you die. Yeah. True. Uh, but the ant s- isn't what we need. A square didn't solve a square. A woman can be a square, but a square can't. Let me take a look at that sandwich one more time. No. Here you go. Look Wait, at these. Look at the way these pieces are cut. Sandwich is a square. A sandwich is a square. Oh. You know what else is a square? What? A frame around a painting. Oh. Yes. Sometimes it's a rectangle. <laughs> if you cut You're an a egg. You're a real dra- <laughs> But wait a minute. Look at the way this <laughs> circular egg is cut into square pieces. Every, hold on a second. I, I think this is true. Every it's rectangle is a square, no. but not every square is a rectangle. Every square is a rectangle. Every square is a rectangle, rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. square. What's a rhombus? Ooh. And the top is shorter than the bottom. Is that it, or is it? Oh no, yeah, because I was thinking of a parallelogram. Well, oh. keep thinking of it, because your face is delightful when you do. What's a rebus? Uh, a rhombus? Like that McIntyre chick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking of? Uh, Reba, Regis. I, guys, I am now. Guys, <laughs> as soon as McIntyre. as soon as he said Reba McIntyre, the giraffe on fire disappeared. What? Oh, oh, okay. Is that the is that the key? The word. I love this, Ross. You know why? Because they have a special section with neighbor. Ah, giraffe on fire! Let's go! I still want. I'm Reba McIntyre. Welcome to my show. It's called McIntyre. <laughs> Where we t- we talk good home talking, and I, I and I give uh, good advice to people around you. Today we're making a pecan pie. Ring ring. Oh, we have a special segment on uh, McIntyre where I answer phone calls. Hello, it's McIntyre. I'm halfway through my pie, and I just I got to tell you I am lost. I'm like in a maze. I got the fruit in the pie. And what I, what I kind got, of fruit are you making? You make peach? You making uh, uh, blueberry? You make apple? What you making? It's just a whole with your basic apple pie. Nothing fancy. Nothing God. proud. Cut. You know what you do? You add a little flour to your thickening agent, and then, then they're sticking in around your uh, apple. To the apple oh, Reba, uh, I'm hanging up because you really helped me out. You're welcome. <laughs> Get McIntyre out. Ring. Next couple phone call on McIntyre. Hello, this is Reba McIntyre. Peaches! <laughs> you, you got peaches? Peaches! Is this peaches calling me, or you you got peaches? Peaches! Me, 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 McIntyre. Sorry, everybody. I'm the floor producer. <laughs> It looks like we's a victim of a prank. Peter. We're gonna have to stop down because, ring, ring. Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> ain't ain't no phones been ringing. People just been saying ring, ring, and uh, that phone you using ain't connected to nothing. There's some kids behind the curtain <laughs> over there. <laughs> so maybe saying Reba McIntyre over oh, and over again. What happened? Look, a couple of the ants just disappeared. <gasps> That's it. We just gotta say. Reba McIntyre. It's not Rebus. <laughs> it's, I don't think. Saying Rebus did nothing. I Rebus watched. Rebus didn't do anything. Reba McIntyre. Come on. Oh, oh Reba McIntyre. Square out. Oh, there. I actually wouldn't mind staying. My daughter is very taxing and my mother is constantly making me guilty and that <laughs> belt does nothing for her. Words. Hey, fair enough. You stick around. Yeah. You, don't, you know what not to say. <laughs> Reba McIntyre. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> the concept of Richard. I think you should stay with us here. Should I stay with you here, or should you stay with me? In Richard, the same just place? goddamn oh, it! Just don't say. I it. lost it. I feel like I had it at the beginning, yeah. and then I lost it. Now, Tim. Yeah. You know what to say. Yeah, I do, Edgar. What do you think? I feel like uh, asking intent and uh, spirit for my bill is ne- it's never actually going to happen. So I'm just going to go because, like, I know the guy is good. Wait, my so you- deli. You're you're gonna stay here. Or you're gonna go back to the go, outside world because, like, I got you know, I have a dog, and I I should probably get back to him anyway. Whatever. All right. Well, then let's uh, let's say it together. Count of three, and we'll we'll go get home. Out of here. If you yeah. want a sandwich, I'll buy you one. Spirit intent. Are you gonna you guys, stay here in the painting? I I think I need to stay. Yeah. We are the intent and spirit of this painting. I'm staying too. I don't know if anyone was wondering. I about invited me. you already. I Richard, know. I just Jesus. wanted to hear the concept of yeah, Richard. We all kind of hey, see Richard, you coming by the way. Hey Richard. Reba McIntyre. My wife, Thelonia. Oh, thank God. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Concept of Richard. Here we go. Ready? One, two, two, three. three. Reba Reba McIntyre. Ha! We're here. We're back on on Earth. Ha! I'm Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre. I have something to do. I have to pay you for exterminating ants. Oh, 
good, you know, this is a good thing for me because, thank you. Do you have a toilet? <laughs> I, in, in many of my homes, I have a toilet, but I didn't. I did not have one on my person at this person's oh. time. All right. No, well. in this building, is there a toilet in this building? Oh, in the museum. Yeah, I have a very weak bladder. Whenever I travel, I gotta. You know. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's toilets. Thank you so much for picking up the bill. I've been haggling with these two wing nuts for like 45 years. Did that stir my life? Stir my life. Reba McIntyre, yeah. uh, my name's Tim. Hi, Tim. Uh, big fan. Um, Thank you. I, I, I have a question to ask you, and I hope you can answer it. Mm -hmm. What time is it? It is... Reba time! <laughs> All right! Okie dokie! Reba time! <laughs> and it all happened at a place called Inside That Salvador Dali Painting with the Melting Clocks. Colleen Smith, where can people find you online and what would you like to promote? Um, they can find me at, I'm going to do my website. Oh, sure. Everyone's doing their websites today. This is exciting. Yes, uh, because then you can see all the things. There you go. ColleenSmee.com. Mm -hmm. There's videos there. My Twitter's there. There's photos of me. My resume is there. My webs. I mean, my, my podcast, podcast is, there. is there. The link to this, this podcast is there. And then, nice. very exciting, very I actually have something to promote this time that's coming up. This is exciting. Yes. This is unprecedented. What is it? And it happens in April. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Look at you. I know. Um, I don't know what date this is in April that you're, this will air. Would you like me to tell you? Yeah. Why don't you read it out? Okay. And then I'll tell you. Um, I am doing a show called The Knot, which I have done before. It's a post-apocalyptic grindhouse lady prison show. Show. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. Like that kind. Cool. That, that what kind is it called? The Knot? N-A-U-G-H-T? N-A-U-T. Uh, it's short for astronaut. There we it's go. It's all about like... Uh, people being abandoned and it's all surreal and strange and I play a sexy astronaut. Everybody's in like lingerie and whatever and it's all making fun of all those 70s right. movies. Um, so there's a lot of rape jokes. Um, <laughs> I'm in. But we're doing it at the Groundlings. I've done it there before. Um, it's a big old fun cast and uh, doing it uh, three Mondays. Okay. So April 4th, April 11th. That's tonight, April 4th. Ooh. So you guys will have maybe heard this in the morning. So come tonight. You should. This is available Monday, the, uh, midnight uh, Monday. So people have had a chance to hear this. Yeah. If they're hearing this right now, they should go get tickets to the show. Yeah. So April 4th, April 11th, and April 18th at the Groundlings Theater there at 8 go. p.m. It's real weird. It's real funny and strange. There's fun people like Drew Drogi in it. There you go. And, you Hilarious. Know, he's a kid. And Artemis Peb Dunn. There we go. People also love. And Absolutely. Love Fun Go see the notch. Trigger warnings in effect. <laughs> Stephanie Courtney. Hello. Um, I just have one little thing. That's uh, I'm in the Crazy Uncle Joe show at the Groundlings. That's right. Every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And I hope that I uh, hope you understood that one <laughs> word. Um, but I hope y'all come and do it. All people yeah. I'm looking at right yeah, I'm now. Please, please, please. Yeah. And that's it. Sarah Burns. That's, uh, that's me. What do you want to tell people about, man? It's, uh, it's April 4th over here. I hope I'm alive because I know you said some of us may not make it. We and may you not. did. I could. I've been taking my vitamins and like exercising regularly, but I could get struck by lightning. That's well. That could happen to anyone. Yeah. But if you're doing that, at least you won't just drop dead out of nowhere. No, I w it wouldn't be like a shock to anyone. And if you do, I'm let like, me apologize right now. Right. I feel like Ronda Rousey, like who predicted her <laughs> knockout, and then. Precisely went down in the same way. All the greats get knocked out at some point. All yeah, the greats it's have gonna a bad make her bigger and better and That's stronger. Right. That's right. So we dedicate this episode to Ronda Rousey. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so wait, is there anything that you would like to tell no, me? I don't about? know. I now don't that we've covered know. your potential death, I'm not even entirely sure what I'm eating on thing, like for dinner tonight. <laughs> So I don't even know what's going on. Free spirit. Hey, love it. Have a crawl up a wall and out a wall. Uh, Eben Schletter. EbenSchletter.com. Eben Schletter on Twitter. Seek out Eben stuff. Get it for your very own self because Eben Schletter is only the best. No, you shut up. Thursdays at 10 p.m. on Fusion. Check it out. If you want to catch up on previous episodes that you missed, uh, go to Fusion.net, go to Hulu, go to YouTube, go to Apple TV. You can find it so many places, you guys. We're trying to make it easy for you. Um, Spontaneous Nation Live happens the first Saturday of every month at Largo at the Coronet. Tickets are online at paulftompkins.com slash live. Uh, go see who is going to be on 
on those shows and then come to see them in person. Those live shows are always a lot of fun. I'm P.F. Tompkins on Twitter. Go to the Earwolf forums and uh, discuss the show with like-minded individuals. It's not a bad idea. Help build a community. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the show. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti. Oh, applause at the end. Hooray! Hooray! I'm alive! Hi, guys. Danielle Schneider here. Eileen, you've done it again. <laughs> As you know, Casey Wilson and I are obsessed with all the Real Housewives. Eileen would be the cheapest, best <laughs> date because you could give her Claire's and she would think it's Cartier. <laughs> so that's why we started Bitch Sesh, a Real Housewives breakdown show. And we've got some really exciting news. Starting this week, we're going to cover the brand new season of... Real Housewives of New York City. Yes! Is Erica here tonight? Maybe she is, bitches. <laughs> so look for new episodes every Thursday morning. Bitch Sesh is coming to the Big Apple. Only on Earwolf. On this podcast, I'll admit you come off like a little nasty. <laughs> This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 